Hello fam, my name is Fire and welcome back to Canon Exiles. Today we're going to do some beginner tips on building. So this is anything from kind of like more beginner advanced. But it's going to be basically going to teach you some skills to do with building. This is going to help for PvE, PvP or whatever you want to do. Of course if you're on PvE you don't really need to worry about fortifying your base so much. But of course on PvP you do need to worry about that kind of thing. So this video will help either the tip I'm going to go through right now is the circle build. So if you want to build a circle build, you have to build it from the inside out. So pretty much you have to start from the inside with the basic kind of circle of wedges. This is how you're going to start off. So you've got your basic tower. Then what you're going to need to do is put foundations on each of the end of these. And you're going to kind of see how this is going to work to make a circle. Then you're going to fill the wedges. And then you're going to use wedges on the squares. So pretty much keep switching between the squares and the wedges to get the ideal kind of circle. So triangles should go on squares, etc. So there you go, you can see if we just keep going like this, you can get all of these in here to fit. And then when you get it even bigger, you can have multiple ones on the end of the triangles. If you just keep going with this kind of pattern and technique, it can actually look really cool as well if you were to use different foundations, make a different pattern floor. But that's pretty much how you're going to make an easy circle. It's a really easy circle to make. My next tip is going to be about space management. So often with a base, especially in PvP, you want to make it small, which means fitting a lot of kind of crafting stations in a very small space. Now you can actually stack a lot of crafting stations, which is a really handy tip to do. Especially when you have the carpenter's table, you can often put things on top and they will sit on it. Can we see there? We can stack the stove on top of the carpenter's bench which now means you have a lot more space to put other things because you've got two really big benches on top of each other. You can also do the same if you were to stack even more on. I don't think we're actually going to get this cauldron on here. But sometimes... Oh, there you go. We stacked another one on there. So you can see you can maximise the space you have in your base by stacking crafting stations such as this. So that's a carpenter's bench, the stove and the fireball cauldron all in one kind of spot. You're not going to be taking up much room this way. And then you can see what you could do here. You can just kind of stack and make sure everything is as close as possible. If you have a structure with a really big kind of base, then it's definitely going to fit. You see here, there we go, we stacked another one. We've got the fluid press now stuck on there. You can see that only takes up, what, a couple of foundations if we went on wedges. Say wedges, it takes up about four maybe. That's not a lot of room. So... You know, we fitted several of these on here that would normally take a whole foundation to their own or even multiple foundations to their own. They're all now on one place. So if you want a tight base to keep all your stuff safe, then it is really good to stack and see what you can stack in the base to keep everything very well organized. So this tip is going to be more of an intermediate one. Pretty much we want to start off with a foundation and then a lot of fence foundations. Fence foundations are often used throughout PvP builds. I find quite a lot of people like to layer with them and do things like honeycombing. And this is to add as much uh, kind of like a barrier for bombs not to explode into their house. So it makes it hard for people to get in pretty much. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to build one of these out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to need some wedges as well. Because now we're going to make it look complicated and we're going to try and get these all close. If you see normally you can only go like this but there is an actual trick and a way to cheat this where you can have these a lot shorter and closer to each other which is really going to help you out. If we start off with this kind of thing and then we just go all the way down we stop there and then if we are to put in another one at the same kind of height then we can start to kind of make it go funny. So now we have it like this, what we want to do is destroy all of these. This is why you want to use sandstone. Then you want to go out like that. There you go. You can already see the difference here. One is closer than the other, so it's not like an, an original. So you can see if I was to kind of extend this one off here, that's not going to work. You can see it's a lot longer than that. Now off your new lengthened one, you want to build some more prototypes. Get rid of these because these are going to get in the way now. So there we go. You can see now, if we build off this extra shortened one and we bring it in between, now you've got this kind of going on. You see how close this is? You can see how nobody can put a bomb in between this kind of gap. So you kind of got the idea with this, and then you can see if we're to continue that, if we build off the short stick, let me just get that, and then we go ahead and build again. There you go. You can see 
we could just keep doing this and making it shorter and shorter and shorter and you eventually end up with something like this and then you can see that you can't really add any more in between however again you can cheat around this and just keep going with the kind of this kind of material here the wedges keep going and there you go we got it straightened out again as you can see we've already added another layer on so we can just keep going and then keep going and then we can just go around again and fill those places you can see how this is working out here we're filling all the places that we got missed and everything and there we go you can see how this works and how crazy you can go with it you can just keep going along with the wedges putting them at different angles and seeing what you can get out of them you can use this in doorways or as walls or as gateways you can use it for anything but it is a good tip to learn because it will make you having walls very close to each other very efficient and a good blast protection so you can see just now through this messy one we should add ideally another bit of foundation in between here and the finished product but just for example you can see how many walls we can fit in that amount of space next bit of this video is wall safety so what you want to do for walls now ideally usually you want to get a wall and you want to stick one of these kind of fences on top with the spikes coming out because what this does is it hurts players and stops them climbing over so you can see i got hurt and now i can climb over however people sometimes make the mistake of making something like this and thinking that will still keep people out well it won't actually because if i was to climb up here now i can just go straight over the spikes and over the other side and get into your base so ideally you want to bring the spikes all the way around as smart as possible and make sure there is no kind of empty space between so you want something more kind of like this per se to stop the people coming out or at least have something like an overhang if I can get that out now attached to your wall that will stop people so something like uh, you had something like this coming over your wall there you go and then you just did that all the way around your wall then people are not going to be able to get up now because you have a little overhang with the spikes on the end which you're going to actually take them off and that could be more damaging if you had it higher up because then they would completely fall to their death so ideally you want to make a protective perimeter all the way around. Remember anything like gates or anything like that they can climb on and get over so make sure you have that protective layer there. My next tip is something you shouldn't ever do which is a window near a crafting station. Even if it's really high up don't do it. Because pretty much you have your crafting station there. Now people can just go and look and they can go ahead and open your table and steal all your stuff out of it if you have a window like that. Never build your stations really close to the wall if you're on a setting where people can take your stuff out of your inventories. Even if that's on some kinds of PvE server as well, people can still raid you that way, which is really, really not good, especially if you have open tables such as that. This tip also relates to clipping. Some structures in the game or benches can actually clip through the wall on the other side, especially on corner pieces. Sometimes people with a full wall like that can actually grab your stuff through the wall if you have anything clipping through. It only takes a very tiny bit and people will just be able to wipe out the inventory or whatever it is clipping. In a place on a server where you don't really know people, let's say, do not clip the stuff through the wall because they will grab your stuff if they have the opportunity to. My next tip is natural foundation staircase. So we've had a foundation and then we put a wall next to it. Pretty much what a wall does is add two snap points so you can have the original or you can have one that goes up like that and then pretty much if we just keep going you can see right here if the deer wasn't in the way we would be able to just keep stacking up and up and up so now we can just add our foundation on and you can see where this goes this can just keep going and going and going and you can keep making that staircase Depending on how low your original foundation was, this time I can go all the way up to 4. Now if I try again I can't do it anymore since this is way too high. But this would give you a staircase either way, now all you need to do is just remove the walls here and then you can carry on living life and having a nice natural staircase that goes up to your base or wherever. So there we go, we've got one. Now that we can walk down perfectly fine and up again. And there you go there's the finished product so you have the nice stairwell like that and then also if you have this kind of technique as well you can also start doing layering again with this kind of thing so like layered ceilings you can also do techniques with this as well and different heights of different things so you can take advantage of this so pretty much we had something like this and then we 
if we were to like bring pillars down we could start kind of layering things so you can see right here already I can layer ceilings really close if I do this kind of technique there you go you do that kind of thing with these kind of stairs as well to have layered ceilings as well so that's an interesting thing to know and uh, yeah I thought I might include this because it might be helpful for those looking for different kind of out of the ideas box but anyway that's just a few of my helpful tips for building if you want to build intricate things or just simple things or whatever i hope this helped you anyway thank you for watching i love you all and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye